After introducing himself, Paul wrote to whom he was writing, to the faithful uh, saints in Christ Jesus at Ephesus. In, in calling them faithful saints, Paul was not saying that they were perfect because of their works, but rather that they were perfect because of Christ's work. Because Jesus died and rose again, we are made faithful saints in him. And yet there's certainly an invitation and command in the Bible to be faithful saints. To, to, we're called to be faithful to God, just as God has been faithful to us. We're called to obey him, to, to go and to cherish him, and to find our purpose in living for him. I, I recently ran across a chart that compared faithful Christianity with what is often said to be Christianity, but actually isn't. Uh, here's the chart. It says, on one side, depersonalized Christianity versus personalized Christianity. But when it comes to faith, depersonalized Christianity says it's accepting a contractual uh, proposition, like we're just believing certain things. But personalized Christianity is committing your, yourself, faith is committing yourself to a person. That's Jesus, right? The Christian life in depersonalized Christianity is keeping contractual obligations. You obey because you feel like you have to obey. But in personalized Christianity, real Christianity is pleasing the Lord, a person. It's about a relationship with Christ. Sin in depersonalized Christianity is violating a contract rule versus personalized Christianity is betraying a relationship with Jesus. God cares about our relationship with him. Repentance in depersonalized Christianity, false Christianity is changed based on contractual obligation versus personalized Christianity, real Christianity is changed based on sorrow, based on a personal, for a personal betrayal. When we, when you, mess up a relationship, you, that, that relationship has a, has a problem you, that needs to be fixed. That's repentance. And forgiveness in depersonalized, depersonalized Christianity is canceling contractual consequences, being forgiven of the, of the ways that you've messed up by violating the contractual rules. But in a personalized Christianity, real Christianity, forgiveness is re renewing and restoring fellowship. See, our relationship with Christ isn't just a contractual obligation. We have a relationship with our Savior, a person, Jesus. So a huge issue that many confessing Christians run into is that they often accept certain truths in their heads, but don't come to fully believe in Jesus in their hearts and to know Jesus, trust in Him. See, Christianity is far more than a contractual obligation we don't simply make an agreement with God so that he forgives us because we've decided to, to obey him. As if our forgiveness depends on us. No, God calls us to a faithful relationship with him. And he was the first faithful one. It'd be, it'd be like if a wife said to her husband, why don't you love me anymore? And the husband responds, what are you talking about? I, I work long hours. I provide for you and the family. I'm, I'm never unkind to you. I've never cheated on you, not even once. What do you mean I don't love you? And his wife may right, rightly respond, I don't want to seem ungrateful for all those things, but what I really want is you. I want to spend time with you. I want you to sit by me at the end of a long day and tell me you love me, hold me. You see, being a faithful Christian has less to do with how righteous we make ourselves by our strength, and everything to do with resting in the righteousness of Christ given to us freely by grace. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, not so that we would then have to prove ourselves worthy of his forgiveness, or even prove that we love him, but so that we would be forgiven by grace through faith in Jesus. And as we rest in Jesus' love for us, we begin to love God from our hearts. And then out of that relationship, we're called saints. Because we are. We're saints. We don't achieve the status of being a saint as if we need to earn it. No, we become saints by God's grace. A saint is someone who is set apart, sanctified for God's purposes. And the moment you become a Christian, you become a saint right then. It's not that we have to, it's not that we're better than other people who aren't saints in our lifestyle but rather that we're consecrated for a purpose. God set us apart. If you're a Christian, you're set apart from the world and set apart from common things so that you would walk not according to your former life, but according to the new life that you have in Christ. That's your purpose. The question is, do you think of yourself that way? 
The Christian life can't be lived as if we're just going about business as usual, continuing to live for all the things that we used to live for even before we were Christians. Get a good job, make a lot of money, you know, get a nice place, retire, and be comfortable. That's not the Christian ideal. Yeah, the Christian ideal is not a shell collection, according to John Piper. The Christian life is radically different and requires a radically different mindset from how we used to live by nature. It requires us to meditate on the things of God. 